Thank you for listening to Lone Star Community Radio. This program was broadcasted and recorded live from the LSCR studios in downtown Conroe, Texas. Lone Star Community Radio is supported by listeners like you. Donate and sponsor today. For more information on getting involved with Lone Star Community Radio, contact us at lscrstudios at gmail.com or visit us online at www.irlonestar.com. All right, we're here on Mornings on Lone Star on Lone Star Community Radio Worldwide on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. And guess what? We are live on YouTube and Facebook. So if you're listening on the app, tune over to YouTube. No more music because we got a special interview. I have Christine Rothwell in the studio with me, and she's from the Margaret Montgomery chapter of DAR, or the DAR chapter of Margaret, uh, Margaret Montgomery. That is the Daughters of the American Revolution. And if you didn't know, and I didn't know, we're going to learn all about this. Uh, we saw, we ratified the Constitution on September 17th, and I believe it was seven, 1779 or 89. 89. 89. That's a long, that's, I mean, that's almost for 10 years mm-hmm. after we started that war. So, that, uh, so what they do, if you didn't know, is the Daughters of American Revolution around the country, I, I imagine it's all the chapters, yes. basically highlight September 17th through the 23rd to talk about the Constitution. Yes. Because there's a difference in the Constitution than the Independence Day, July 4th. Big difference. And everyone needs to know it because we all see National Treasure. I'm pretty sure that was about the Constitution, right? <laughs> right. Was that about the Constitution? Well, uh, Christine, welcome to the studio. How are thank you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Thank That's you for good. having me. I appreciate you guys reaching out. Uh, the Margaret Montgomery is the local chapter here for the Daughters of American Revolution. Well, you said there's several. So th- you're part of the Margaret Montgomery, the, bi- the probably the best one. Right. Because it's named after probably... It's actually named after Margaret Montgomery, who was here in Montgomery County. Um, her husband uh, was a Revolutionary War Patriot, and um, actually, uh, she and her husband are both buried here in oh, Montgomery wow. County. Mm-hmm. See, that's what's so interesting about this area, especially Texas in, in itself, is just the history. And yes. then one thing I realize, I, what I love, and I don't know if a lot of younger people appreciate this, is even today, there's people who stay. They stay in one area for their whole lives, yep. and all, that was very frequent back then. And then you have a town of Montgomery, which I imagine it might be named after these people. I don't really know. It's kind of convenient that they're both named Montgomery. <laughs> uh, I know Conroe's named after Isaac Conroe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure he did some interesting things here. I know he brought the Switch Railroad Station. He was a postman. I know that. So, and there's also that uh, the the Texas flag was it made here? The Texas flag. Was so uh, that's made not Montgomery, Montgomery though. That's is it Juan? It's Montgomery. It was her family member. Um, I. Don't know exactly. This is crazy. Name. We I should know. we should look into it yeah. now. It's a conspiracy theory. <laughs> but let's talk about the American Revolution. We're talking about the the building of this country itself, the United States. So September seventeenth, the Constitution is ratified, which means basically it's n- no take backs. Right. At right. That, at, at that, that point, point, no, the government can't take it back. They're like right. we got it. It's signed, stamped, sealed, and delivered. Correct. And you guys just really pump up the awareness of that. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, people tend to, you know, hear, well, that's unconstitutional or, you know, under the, but they don't really know what it says. Oh, no. And so I don't. It, you know, I think if everybody took the time to read the Constitution, um, especially the preamble, because the preamble sets up exactly Wait, is what. Is that we the people? We the people. See, I kind of know it, but I don't know <laughs> it. Well, mainly because I don't, I mean, the last time I learned about it was. You know, ninth grade or something like that. And then National Treasure came out, and I kind of understood it then. Right. And so um, that sets up what they wanted to do. And um, and then we have the amendments after that because the Constitution is a living document. It's, you know, we the people start that out. And then as times change, as circumstances change, you know, we have to adapt. So then you have all the different... um, amendments that were made yeah i think that's what, what uh i'm not i'm not going to challenge you but I'm, i have to ask because i don't really know so i always th- i always think of those documents as like the book of the united states so you have like the constitution you got the preamble you had the amendments and then you have the bill of rights but is it like all of that stuff is kind of together in one way or another like if someone hand me a packet they're all be together yeah kind of kind of because you have it's a it's a progression yeah it's a progression from you know, when those patriots decided that, you know, th- the way the the British w- government was not, was treating um, 
those who were living in the Americas at yeah. that time. Um, and they didn't have any representation. They didn't have a say in, you know, how they were treated and what the rules were. And so when those patriots said, you know, enough is enough, and... They shot that person. <laughs> Who shot sh- first? I think we did. I, I, I think we did. I don't know that. I think you why don't we? Why story. don't we claim that? Um, what's wrong with claiming that? I, I like don't we know already, you know what I'm talking about? I don't think it's a matter of what's wrong with claiming that. I think it's more of a, you know, just trying to be accurate with history. Um, oh, and great. Knowing, and oh, knowing great. what is... <laughs> so everyone's so confused. Like, right. hey, we want to be right, but we don't re- we really, we really don't know. Like, <laughs> I, I think, don't... <laughs> I think that there's probably, you know, historians that study this a lot closer that will be, you know, have a better answer uh, to that question. But, you know, it, it, the Constitution was a, was a progression. It was a progression yeah. of, of discussions and arguments. And, um, you know, it wasn't an easy... It wasn't an easy document to come up with. It's, you know, um, one of our founding fathers says it's kind of a miracle that it actually happened. Oh, yeah. Um, because... Well, especially, it, like, the value that's written into it. Like, we're kind of... Like, today, we're still benefiting from it. We are still Which benefiting. is kind of nuts, because I, I imagine other governments around the world, their history, like... I don't think a lot of people can say we're still benefiting from our government from 400 years ago, 200 years ago, 100 years ago, or whenever, you know, when they had their documents written right right and the constitution is one of the shortest constitutions um it, it, it's not wordy <laughs> yeah um it, it fits it, on a page but it, yeah it fits on a page or like or parchment or whatever right. <laughs> that, i don't think that was legal size right. i don't know what size they call that back in the day exactly i could i could totally see somebody going well, we got to make sure it fits on one page. Well, <laughs> how big do we need to make it? Well, we'll figure that after we like we do our drafts, <laughs> and that's why it fits on a page. <laughs> I bet that was some like jab at the, the British government or something because they have like twenty pages, and it's like we have to do one page. Yeah, I you know like I said, <laughs> it was it was a lot of discussions. The Articles of Confederation were 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 not working when they came up with the Constitution. They needed to make some changes, um, so they came up with. The Constitution and it has it has lasted, it has endured. So and uh, and I think that's interesting because, like I said, there's the Bill of Rights, the preamble, and then the actual Constitution itself. And a lot of people don't know how it all works because I really, I mean, like I, the only time I really pay attention is if I need to pay attention to it, <laughs> if that makes sense. So it's never like it's not like a philosophy. Mm-hmm. I mean, because everyone says like, oh, we're born, we have we're born with rights. I'm like, I don't know. Because, you know, the Constitution hasn't been around for a long time, and the Bill of Rights haven't, like, then we... I, th- I think the Constitution recognizes those human rights. Yes. And that's that's what, that's and what it, that preamble says. And it's says. almost like a back... It's almost like the, the big brother backing you up, in a way. Like, it's reaffirming your beliefs. It's like, it, hey, this is, this is something... Especially with the amendment process and how we kind of, as a country, rarely do that. And we try to stick with those things. We rarely do it, I think, because, you know, I think a lot of people recognize that, you know, there are basic tenets of, you know, what those founding fathers had in mind so that our country would endure, so that our former government would endure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, the fact that we live in a democracy and that, you know, those the very first three words are we the people. Do you think today's government doesn't think that way? When, like, the endure word is, to me, is very special. The way you just described it is, like, making sure we endure as a country. I know, I was like, I never really thought of the future that way, especially when you're thinking about people, not just me personally, but, like, just the group of, like, a government or that kind of thing. I, I don't really know. Because back then they had to. You had to endure because, I mean, you're basically on a ship without a paddle because you're just a new government. You're kind of like— It was a new government, yeah. and it was a learning process. And, you know, that's why, you know, the, the Constitution is a living document. It, it, it tries to keep the basic tenets of what the Founding Fathers, you know, had in mind, and it's a guide to everybody of, hey, this is what we're founded on, Mm-hmm. Um, and which is why it's important to read, you know, to read and educate yourself. Read the document. Um, you know, talk to people who have more no- knowledge about what those words mean and what, um, and what you know, how it affects you know your life and why it's important. Um, it affects all of us. 
Well, I'm glad to have you, Christine, being the PR for the Constitution, <laughs> because I think the fact that, that September 17th isn't celebrated as equally as July 4th True. True. is something very, I think that's kind of weird. But then again, it's people get tired of holidays. I mean, they're like, oh, we already did July 4th. That's first. So we don't want to do it again. Well, July July 4th is a big deal. I mean, yeah. and, and it's it's what yeah. kicked things off. Yeah. Um, you know, and I the constitution is more of a you know, an awareness. You know, what does it say? You know, how does that affect, you know, what I do um as a citizen? What should I be doing as a citizen? Um and, you know, every aspect of our lives that constitution helped determine what we as a a country what we stand for what we want um what we want to our lives to look like um and it it gives you know it gives a structure yeah because i always wondered if teaching somebody about america what american values are at a, like a younger age, it's never as impactful as you get older. Because, like, I feel like as like today, I'm 37 years old, and I'm kind of understanding how this world works. It's going to have a greater impact on me because of what it's telling me, like you said, how to mm-hmm. live your life and how, how this country should be operating as a people. But as, like, a, a kid in ninth grade, I don't I just want to go play baseball, you know, and, and, you know which is I mean, American, too. But. but I think kids, though— we need to give them a little bit of credit. I think that they absorb. No, they're idiots. More. They're all idiots. No. They absorb more than I think adults give them credit for. Oh well, I just I, and... yeah. Thank you. I did not give them any credit. <laughs> I I was just saying about the impact of when you learn more about it. Because why do you think older people like love history? And like, there's a mm-hmm. few kids who probably love history, but it's not as many as like adults that grow into that. And, and speaking of kids, mm-hmm. you guys do uh, a special thing here locally. Y'all uh, dropped off kind of like thank you packages for teachers. Who... We did. We went to Sam Houston Elementary School, which is a school here in Conroe. Um, we dropped off baskets that contained, um, you know, copies of the Constitution um, and supplies for the teachers to help make their job easier to teach uh, government. Um, matter of fact, the third grade classes are th- this week. We're starting their units on um, the American government. So, yeah, we, we went and recognized those teachers, thanked those teachers. I mean, they're heroes um, for, you know, teaching about government, teaching about, you know, social studies um, in the classroom. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we did that this week. So uh, I want to let people know who are just now tuning in. We have uh, Christine Rothwell with the Margaret Montgomery chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution talking about September 17th was the ratification of the Constitution, and we're talking about spreading awareness. If you want to know any more information about uh, Daughters of American Revolution, I'm going to put a link to the overall organization, which is actually dar.org. But if you want to contact the local chapter, it's I'm going to put an email address. It's conroemmdar at gmail.com. That's Conroe, uh, Margaret Montgomery, so M-M. Uh, and then DAR for Daughters of American Revolution. Yes. So I want to make sure people know that because I know you guys. Uh, I, how how would you describe your organization? Is it more of a service organization? Is it a club? Is it a like a private like hangout thing? Or is it like do you have to have qualifications? Like do I actually have to be American <laughs> to be in it? It's for um, any woman eighteen years of age or older mm-hmm. who can uh, tie her lineage back to a patriot. Um, cool. It's it, you know we help we help with finding that patriot. If you've heard a family story, you know so and so, my great 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 grandfather. Well, the the scary ancestry dot com slash, I don't know. That's the DNA thing. That's not really going to help. Uh, but there there is ways to find out. Yeah, it's kind of creepy. There's a lot of ways to find out. There's many genealo- genealogy sites online yeah. that you can do. Some of them are free. Some of them obviously are are, are paid service. Um, you can go to dar.org, and there is submit a, your spit. A, there's a way of you can go into the the genealogy tab, and wow. put in some names and yeah, that actually happened to me. Uh, we had the Texas Re- Sons of the Texas Revolution in, and I mentioned something to them, and then the guy like three weeks later came back on another show, and he's like, "Hey, I found your your uncle. Oh, he fought at the Battle of San Jacinto, and da da da." And I was like, "Okay." 
what does that mean for me? Like, I, and he showed me the deed yeah. that he got for fighting in the war. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense now because we still have that land. And I was like, I didn't even think about that. Well, a lot of um, a lot of deed records and family yeah. genealogy records are now starting to come online. One of the projects that— Yeah, it was like a scan thing. I was mm-hmm. like, that's crazy. One of the projects that DAR does is what's called Project Patriot, where okay. we look at the patriots and we look at the documents that are associated with them um, to come up with names and, you know, who are they related to. So somebody who wants to join DAR, for example— um, and they're looking through their family history, they can look at those names and see if there's a connection and see if there is a... So if you have a really big connection, are you like higher up in the organization? <laughs> no, no, no. And we are not a club. I know you mentioned that well, I, a club. It's more, no, it's more of like, in my mind, I'm trying to think of like, you have a chapter mm-hmm. and then it's like you do these services, like you, you're doing the baskets for right. the teachers. But then I'm thinking like, you know, people are so passionate about history. So do you guys meet a lot, or do we you... meet? We meet once a month. Yeah, um, and we our our programs are varied. Yeah, sometimes yeah they are historical, but a lot of times like women's issues. Um, we talk about education. You, you guys have issues. <laughs> you know, family. Um, just, I'm, that, that was a, that was a cool joke. I'm uh, sorry. A family <laughs> or professional um, discussion. That's great. See, like mm-hmm. this may this is kind of connecting the dots for me, especially mm-hmm. locally. I so don't, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what DAR does. Um, they are a service organization. We do a lot of community service. We do things for veterans. Um, we support our active and retired military veterans. Um, we go into the schools. We promote literacy. We work with um, well, various organizations. It, it's almost like as time went by after the revolution, is your organization you're the like you're the ladies of america just yes. serving your community serving our community serving our country As, and that because i imagine there's a men's one i imagine there is and it's the and they probably of- just drink beer and play pool <laughs> they don't do any of this cool stuff you're talking about they do they actually do a lot actually the sons of the american revolution freedom chapter was at our bell ringing event we had this past sunday and they provided the um color guard okay. for us um they shoot any guns or anything no, they didn't shoot any guns. I feel like guns will be shot in the guys' organization. I feel like that's a thing. I think they have a cannon. Oh, I see, that's they... what I'm talking about. I knew it. Because I know the <laughs> Texas one does, and it's loud. I'm like, this is obnoxious. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, anyway, if that makes sense, that's why I'm kind of hearing about the Daughters of American Revolution. It's like, you guys have, were built for, you know, like, what America stands for and being part of your community. It's so it's really not necessarily true. just history. It's, it's like, not just history. Yeah. So now um, I'm, I'm understanding it now. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. We're a very active organization. Um, we have over a million members um, across the country. And actually, we even have uh, units overseas, um, some chapters that are overseas in uh, several Please countries. tell me there's some in Britain. There is. There's, oh, there's man, that's, actually, so, that's so cool. <laughs> there are actually, actually one of the oldest chapters overseas is located in Britain. We have them in Japan. How do they feel about that? You know, they do pretty much the same thing we do. A lot of um, their members are either over there because they're they're working there or... Well, they've also shifted a lot as a government. Yeah. Oh, since then. Mm -hmm. I really think... I mean, from what I... Like, they're not wearing red coats anymore. (laughs) Like, I don't think their army has any red coat division. I think they (laughs) literally got rid of the red coats because they lost, I guess. I don't really know. I don't know. And know. their kings and queens aren't that important as they used to be. Yeah, they. I mean, I don't know what their form of government is. I'm not an expert on on British government. I think they just they took the loss like a champ, and they're just like, oh, we got to change because America's clearly got the right idea. Yeah, yeah. And I can't believe you have a chapter over there. That's yeah. so funny to me. Yeah. Uh, we have we have chapters in Canada. We have chapters wow. in Japan. Uh, I get because there's probably a military thing yeah, going on we over have there. In Germany. We have yeah. in, in Guam, the Bahamas. Well, that, why, don't you, why don't we go to that one? Why don't we just do the Bahama one? That <laughs> I would like to go visit the Bahama yeah, one. Let's do that. <laughs> I love it. Well, I want to put the link to the website because you guys really do have a lot of stuff, especially as uh, the organization as a whole. I mean, you have a museum. You all have all like it's, – it's actually too much information, to be honest. 
but there's a local one, the Margaret Montgomery one, that's here. And you said there's several other ones here locally. There are several ones, and we meet on different days of the week. So, yeah. Um, do you do you have to be living in a certain area to be part of a no. certain one, or like if a listener is like, oh, I like Christine a lot, I need to join the Margaret one. She can do that. She can. That's she wonderful. Can. Yeah, it's we have we actually have members that belong to or have a main chapter, and then they are an associate member um, at another chapter. Yeah. You know, so when they're traveling, they can participate, you know, on vacation, you know, or if they have family, maybe their family belongs to a different chapter. And so when they're visiting family, they go um, to that chapter meeting. That's really cool. And you guys are a nonprofit. We are a nonprofit. So that's, yes. That we didn't mention that. And then uh, again, I put the website for the overall organization and I also put the email for the local chapter if you want to have more information or speak to someone like Christine at the Mar- uh, Margaret Montgomery chapter. And then, uh, yeah, so, you know, is there anything else you want to talk about? I mean, y'all do a lot. I mean, the Constitution, I still think it's kind of uh, unfortunate that we don't celebrate the 17th as much as we celebrate July 4th. But then again, I don't really understand history and the importance. Because to me, the Constitution is like the house. Mm -hmm. And the American Revolution was fighting for the land, if that makes sense. And so it's like, you got to, when you get your land, you just don't have land. You got to do something with it. Right. And so. Yeah. And like I said, you know, this is this week is for bringing awareness and also to encourage, you know, the citizenships to to go and look at that document. I want to say I had to I had to memorize it. And that that was like a test, but Mm -hmm. I clearly don't remember it. It might have been the Bill of Rights. It was it was probably the preamble. For sure. Well, I think I think I I think the Bill of Rights and the amendments. I had to memorize the amendments because I remember. I got an argument about, do we have to remember the ones we don't use anymore? Because <laughs> there's a couple. There's a couple we got rid of. And I was like, I don't think it's fair for us to like have to memorize stuff that's irrelevant to us. But it's not really irrelevant. I know to it's think not. About but it. I was trying to, you, you know? know, I was trying not to remember one, like a couple <laughs> things, okay? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and I think, oh man, it's so much, that's so interesting. That's so much fun, especially this week. That's really important for folks. And uh, yeah, I guess. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for And talking about me. the Daughters of American Revolution. Uh, you're listening to Morning's Lone Star here at Lone Star Community Radio, IRLoneStar.com. Don't forget, uh, Morning's Lone Star is always looking for guests. Reach out. Just look us up at Morning's Lone Star or Lone Star Community Radio. We're going to get back to the music. Send us your song requests at Star at gmail.com. And a special shout out to Daughters of American Revolution. Check out their information below. And happy Constitution Week. I guess we should be talking about that more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back later.